Hi, this is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call on Wednesday, October 21st. Uh, I'm Neil Caden, um, uh, moderator for today or facilitator, um, and uh, welcome everyone. Um, let's see, I'm going to go over to the agenda. Oh, I didn't even put my name in here yet. Um, so, let's see. First thing, are there any uh, project updates uh, and announcements? Hi, this is Wilma. Um, just a couple quick uh, reminders. There's still time to register for the virtual conference. So if you haven't yet, um, you still have time. And also the, um, the Sakai 11 skin contest uh, is um, still open for another week. The deadline for that is um, the 28th. So if you're interested in taking part in that contest, there's still time to sign up. Thank you, Wilma. Any other uh, project updates or announcements? Um, I'll mention one that just popped in my mind. Um, let me find my calendar here. Um, there is a uh, Sakai camp meeting, and it's the official announcement hasn't gone out, but it looks almost close to 100%. So you might want to consider it's uh, it's being um, run by the Sakai Project Management Committee, the PMC, but it is a completely open meeting, um, and I'll be talking about you know where we are in Sakai 11 at that point in time. It's going to be in January, and also Sakai 12, and maybe also future. Uh, possibilities and ex experimental ideas uh, and that is going to be if I'm not mistaken uh, January 25th 26 are going to be the main day so it'll be two full days on Monday and Tuesday um, they'll probably be like a half a day on the 27th that um, ad hoc kind of groups could get together and talk about various Sakai issues or do working groups um, and then there'll probably be a social event on Sunday the 24th. So if you're interested in that, it's completely open meeting. Um, it's going to be in Orlando, Florida, and they're just kind of, I think, working out the final contracts with the hotel to, to nail everything down. Any other project updates, announcements, or uh, of any sort? I think another thing that I remember seeing is I think there's a, the, the Aperio newsletter is uh, uh, there's a deadline for that, I think it was October 26th. And so that's a great way to uh, make general announcements of uh, different things going on in the community. So feel free to share. It's a completely open kind of newsletter. Uh, Neil, it looks like Adam does not have his mic turned on, but he has mentioned in the chat that rewriting the Turnitin integration project has gotten started. Oh, I yeah. see that. Yes, I've got my microphone on now. Sorry about that. <laughs> can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's pretty much that, really. <laughs> the um, Yeah, we've finally started um, rewriting the Turnitin integration. So, all being well, it will be finished around about Christmas time. Um, and then people have got um, the best part of a year to get it together to move um, from the current integration to the new one. So, we'll, I'll keep posting details about it um, as, as we go along. Okay, super. Thank you. Um, that reminds me of another, another announcement, which is that we're working on the latest release for the latest community supported version of Sakai is uh, Sakai 10.5 and we're working on a 10.6 release. I'm going to send an email out over the next several days. If anyone wants to help test, we are testing now. So if your institution is on 10 and you want to make 10 even better um, and get, you know, more, more bug fixes uh, uh, integrated into it, you know, fixed up. Um, Feel free to contact me. Uh, uh, basically, the type of testing we're doing primarily are things that already are fixed in uh, in Sakai, what's called master now, used to be called trunk, and kind of verif verifying that they work and then merging them into 10. And we've already gotten a number of blockers and criticals in 
Sakai uh, 10 branch, if we were to le release today, we would have about a total of, I think, like 50 some odd fixes already in there. There's potentially about like another 100 issues we could get merged in if people, you know, you might want to look at issues that are important to you um, and verify their fix so they get into that release. So uh, that's the thing we're working on right now is uh, getting out a the latest maintenance branch of, of uh, 10. Oh, I see a question here about Turnitin I missed. Um, Jennifer asked, Turnitin current API won't work after December 31st. Will this fix that or is this different? Uh, it, no, apparently it will. Um, they've changed their minds. I don't know um, how official it is, but they told me it would work all of next year. But I, I don't know whether we can completely rely on that, but that's what they said. So, I mean, we were planning to switch over, I think, um, in July. June, July, um, but the code should be ready by Christmas time ish, possibly a little after. Um, and um, you'd be welcome to move over then. But yeah, do check. It's, it's slightly confused information to be honest, but because they did say uh, that they did say it was going to be the end of this year that it was going to go away, but um, apparently not. Okay, thanks. So uh, that was going back a little bit to turn it in. And again, working on a maintenance release for 10 could really use help testing, QA testing. So uh, contact me if you're interested in helping. And if your institution, again, is either moving to 10 or is on 10, uh, this might be of interest to you to make sure that um, bug fixes that are especially important to your, you know, to your local institution, to your instructors and students get, get uh, addressed and get in the release. It's a good opportunity to do that, as well as help the community uh, get out the latest version. All right, so I think that covers uh, announcements. Anything else? Okay. Well, if you think of anything, interrupt me. Uh, put something in the chat. We can always come back to it. Um, I put on the Jira of the week. Um, testing on Morpheus, so there's a there's an effort um, which I will share with you. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen, if I can. Hmm, where's the screen sharing option? <laughs> uh, Matt, could you uh, give me presenter permission so I can uh, share my screen? Maybe I'm missing that. Thank you. Ah, uh, there it is, okay. Allow Java. Allow. And run. OK, it looks like that's working. Nice whistle. Uh, I don't know that that whistling is, but. <laughs> Sorry, it was me. I thought I'd muted my uh, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, so there's an effort underway. So this is the more Sakai 11, uh, which, uh, you know, the kind of the status of Sakai 11 is that we're, uh, as of yesterday, the Gradebook NG team said that they are ready to merge in Gradebook NG into master, which is really exciting. So it sounds like an any day now thing. And once that happens and we have, um, have that in master, we'll, uh, the, there'll be a review and we'll kind of, uh, kick the tires on. Greybook NG, you all are welcome to test it out. It's actually available now in Experimental, uh, Nightly Experimental. I can provide the link to that if you're interested. And um, and then we'll firm up the schedule. Uh, you know, my thinking is that we'll have something released uh, before the Aperio conference in 2016, uh, possibly well before that. I'm getting input from folks on um, their needs for uh, Sakai 11 release. So people are already starting to think about releasing Sakai 11 in 2016 and I'll send out the link to that uh, survey because uh, that may also help drive um, drive the schedule as well, getting that input. And of course, one of the major features of Sakai 11 is Morpheus, which is responsive design so that things can work on both desktop size and, and uh, as well as mobile devices. And uh, we have started an effort, thanks to the folks in Spain, especially the S2U group, which is the Spanish-speaking users group, um, which is a, a 
group of institutions in Spain that meet on a regular basis, I think weekly, and they prioritize issues and find common issues that they all want to get fixed and, and work on those. And they're all very interested in Morpheus as well as the community, and they've set up this really beautiful little test plan here. We're going tool by tool. So you can see the instructions are on a weekly basis, one or two tools are announced. There'll be a parent JIRA, which will be put on this Confluence page. Testers can create their own JIRAs uh, or link to subtasks. And if you're not comfortable with a JIRA, you can create a um, Confluence page so that we can at least see what you're doing and one of the team can then create a JIRA for you. Uh, though we'd definitely prefer if you'd put a JIRA in there and I'm happy to help people guide you through that process. Um, and then we'll, the Morpheus team, which meets directly after this meeting, will review the open JIRAs and try and prioritize and address fix most of the issues. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do um, capturing of screenshots. Um, uh, one that they really like to use is Evernote. So they put an Evernote uh, sketch. It's a tool from the Evernote folks, actually. There's an English version and a Spanish version there. There are other really great screen capture tools available. And then here's the, here's the, um, the list of tools that we're working on. So we already did announcements, and we have a parent year for the announcements, and did some testing. A couple of us did testing, and there's polls. I think that this week they announced assignments and calendar, so we're looking for, for help there. And um, um, some folks have contacted me informally that they think they'll be able to help. What's really nice about this testing is it doesn't require technical knowledge, except for knowledge of how to create JIRA or uh, you know a JIRA. And if you can't do that again, we'll uh, find other ways for you to contribute. But primarily, it's going and looking for um, graphical issues you're noticing on different screen sizes. So I'm going to skip step three and go right to examples. So here's examples of issues where there wasn't enough padding. Um, and so they said, OK. They, they, and that's what Sketch is good for, because you can take a screenshot, and then you can easily put in arrows, and you can put in um, text like this. So that's what they used. Um, and is there enough um, margin on the left? Contrast needed here, because they're hard to see those pop downs. Um, I think they have another example here on a mobile device. Width needs to be fixed. You see how the width in this uh, is, this particular field is going into the black area and the width on this one as well. So that's all you have to do is kind of look around, look for where you notice things don't look right in the tool, take a screenshot and put the screenshot in a JIRA or a set of screenshots in a JIRA. Um, in terms of doing the testing, um, they have examples here of using, there's a, there's a couple different really easy ways of doing uh, testing at different screen sizes. One is just to use your desktop environment and then move the screen smaller and smaller. Another one, until it gets replicates roughly what a mobile device or a smaller device would look like. Another they're showing here, uh, which um, testing in Chrome or testing in Firefox. I tested this one out in, in Firefox this morning. I'm confident the Chrome one works fine too. Um, on a Mac, I found their directions were great. I did Alt Command I on the Mac, and then it brought up a little debug window, and then there was this little icon um, that is pretty hard to see, ironically, but it's uh, like a screen size um, responsive design icon. You click on that, and then the upper left hand side of the screen, I saw options for different screen resolutions, so that I could pick that screen resolution and test in that screen resolution. I've also tested on my phone directly and just learned how to do screenshots on my phone and you know how to get them off my phone and be able to upload. So that's another way you could do it is test right on your phone. Um, and then here's similar instructions for Chrome, which is really nice because it looks like the instructions are very, very similar to Firefox. So I um, really encourage people to participate. The more eyes we have on this, the better. And um, uh, you know, make will make the release uh, go faster as well. The more QA, the, you know, all these little things that we can kind of clean up. So, I'll just open it up for questions. Did that make sense to everybody? Did I talk too fast? I was, uh, uh, or was it so simple that it just makes perfect sense? The link to that page is on on the internet tab. You can have I'm having. How do we get to this page? You mean? Yes. Okay, let me paste the link into the Etherpad. Oh, I think it's already there. 
If you okay. click on this link, it has all the instructions. It's already on the Etherpad. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm available for answering questions, as I'm sure the Morpheus, uh, the other folks in the Morpheus team would be happy to answer questions, too, if you, you know, uh, need some help or guidance. <clears throat> Any other questions? The question from Terry, I think, was was the link uh, to where to get instructions on how to do this testing, and that link, what I was showing, that Confluence page is right here. So if you go to the Etherpad that we're using for the Perio Teaching and Learning and click on this link, then it provides you um, the instructions, and the instructions are all on just one page. And also, another thing that's probably good wor worth pointing out is that um, there is a, the you could test either on Nightly 2, which I can put that link in here. Um, let me go ahead and do that. Nightly 2.sakaiproject.org. Uh, you could test on trunk one of the trunk master, either Oracle or MySQL. Or you could test on the, um, the Murthia, University of Murthia. They host a server. And the advantage of using the Murthia server is that they only refresh their data once a week. So if you start testing now and you didn't have time to finish testing today, you could, you know, complete it over the next couple days, and it won't get refreshed until Monday. The nightly server, like the one I put in just now, uh, that one is, those are refreshed every single night. So you have to, if you start testing today, you know, generally you need to finish testing um, the same day. Although for this kind of testing, it really doesn't matter because all you're doing is, is taking screenshots. You're not running through a workflow or a functionality necessarily. Um, so it depends, although you might want to do that to find other kind of bugs. Um, and uh, the thing about, of course, the Murthia one is in Spanish by na natively, but you can create an account and set your preferences to uh, make it English. So you can still you can still work in English, even though the default language, um, of course, is, is Spanish for that server. Any other questions? I hope I didn't confuse you all too much, and I hope you're able to participate in one of these uh, QA testing efforts. QA is one of the you know, best ways to help the community that doesn't require funds and it doesn't require deep technical <coughs> knowledge and really helps push the project forward. So I encourage you all to think about ways you can be involved and happy to help with that. Um, so moving on along here, it looks like we have uh, a friend here, Brian Holiday uh, from Longsight. And uh, he is going to show us, uh, uh, I always forget how you pronounce it, for veracity? Veracity? <laughs> yeah, close. That's very close. Uh, okay. No, Verisite. Um, Verisite. Yep. Thanks, Neil. Uh, anything else? Or no, no, there? that's good. Go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Um, all right, can you guys hear me just fine? Yep. OK, I'll let Neil speak for the group. And. Um, Trying to think. I guess I need to be presenter, and I probably need to start my screen if you don't already see it. No, don't sit. Don't see it yet. You okay. need to do some screen sharing. I think share your uh, awesome. desktop. Yeah. Okay. It should be on the upper left hand. There should be an icon. Chrome the upper no left longer hand. supports Java applets. You must use a different web browser. <laughs> yeah, you have to use. That's right. You can't use Chrome okay. for screen sharing. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Do you have Fox available? Firefox works. I do. Let me get that okay. going. Okay. I didn't know this would be. We'll wait for you. Okay. <clears throat> we'll have uh, we'll have Adam lead us in a uh, concert of whistling. We'll do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, get the link. I can just describe everything I do. Is that does that work? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Try. Move my mouse over to the URL bar and typing it in. <laughs> All right, password, hold on. Room number two. And I'm going to jump off here. All right, bye. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Terrific. Awesome. And Brian, too. Let's see. All right, can you see my screen? Not yet. 
All right. I press the button. It sometimes usually takes oh, multiple press presses, it. right? It, it asks you a lot of questions for screen sharing. And then the final one should be run Java. Oh, I think here's an allow option. Yep. And if it asks so, you to upgrade Java, probably skip that one. But Should I do Adobe or Java? Um, I don't know. I just have been using Java. Uh, I didn't. I would just enable both. Allow both of them, maybe. Yeah. I'll allow now. Okay. I think now I got to do an update. Sorry about all don't this. Do, don't do. Don't do the update. Skip the update. Oh, cancel. Just skip it. Yeah. Skip the all update. Right. Yeah. Cancel it. Don't bother with the update. There you go. Now okay. it's coming out. Good advice. Good advice. Okay. All right. All right, so I can see you now. So we're good. Um, all right, my name is Brian Holiday. Uh, worked a lot in Sakai, and for the last couple of years, uh, a lot of my focus has been on Verisite. Uh, basically, we uh, we Longsite. Um, those who are not familiar, uh, we do a lot of hosting for Sakai, um, and we saw a need for our clients for a competitor to. Um, plagiarism detection services that are available in Sakai, uh, which there's only one. Oh, now there's two, obviously. Um, so we were thinking, you know, we, we set out to make Verisite, um, you know, very stable. The integration just works, you know, no, no, because we, we got a lot of uh, support tickets and issues from the other service and we, we were getting flooded with that. Um, so we wanted our service to, to just work. Um, you know, to focus on the integration. We wanted the price to be fair. So we worked on, you know, that we, we have open pricing. There's no negotiating. There's no deals behind the scenes. Um, you know, you, you know what you're paying for. You know, and the price is uh, cheap as well as 88 cents for user per year. Um, so straightforward, easy to use, and dependable uh, with good support is basically what we set out for. Um, so that's that's what we came up with, Verisite. Um, and as I said, that's what I've been working on for the last couple of years. Um, uh, I wasn't. I forgot that I had this meeting or this uh, presentation today, so I'm just gonna kind of read through some of the slides, but probably skip through a lot of them um, as well. So let's see. So you know, ver plagiarism detection tools. Uh, we're not out to just get students and you know we're out to help teach students how to properly cite information um, and open up a dialogue and so this is what Verisite kind of kind of tries to do it tries to to set it up as a positive teaching scenario essentially um, we uh, as I mentioned we do simple easy reliable consistent affordable engaging um, all those things are, are, are is what I kind of went over earlier. So <laughs> I'll just skip that slide as well. Um, let's see. So part of the integration, um, for example, if uh, if a report somehow does not get submitted, uh, the Sakai integration actually looks to determine whether it's been submitted or not. And if it isn't, it just automatically resubmits it until there is a score. Um, our scores are instant, so there's no job that has to run. Um, there's no, you know, issues with student emails not existing. You know, we, Verisite doesn't care if there is no email um, for a student. Uh, if an assignment doesn't exist, then it'll create that assignment. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, it fills in the blanks. It doesn't just throw errors. It doesn't, you know, it just wants to get that report for you. And so if it doesn't exist, it'll fill in the blanks for you automatically and try resubmitting until it does exist. Um, so that's, that's part of that easy, reliable submission process. Um, as I said, they're instant reporting. So um, we use the latest technology uh, with, with um, databases. So um, the key value stores, essentially the Cassandra, Dynamo, uh, that style of uh, databases um, where, you know, the they're, they're meant for high, large scale uh, instant answers, instant reporting. So, um, you know, this is, uh, for example, Netflix uses uh, Cassandra. So, you know, the scale of Netflix, you know, is a limit, basically the limit. So, I mean, it can, 
it's meant to be fast, and that's what we use that, that kind of technology. Um, obviously, um, other things as well, um, Amazon and other services. So we're, we're uh, you know dependable, uh, as dependable as Amazon is. Um, let's see, uh, easy to read reports. I'll, I'll go through all this stuff instead of just reading it. Um, outstanding support, stable integration. Uh, Sorry, compares text. So we we have um, our own crawlers that's running 24/7, gathering. Uh, well, we've we've crawled over a billion URLs, uh, 500 plus terabytes worth of information. Um, we've, you know, every stu or every client gets their own private repository, so your submissions get. Uh, checked against themselves, but only against themselves and not other people. So we're not, you know, using your data for our profit. Um, it's only for yourself, and it's private. Um, we support any text format. There's no restrictions. So there's not. You're not going to get, you know, report cannot be delivered because you know it happened to be an Excel or something or spreadsheet or you know PowerPoint. Any of that. You know, if if it has text, even if it's a zip file, it'll grab it and grab the text out of it. So we've made it very reliable in that case. Uh, Instant, I've already mentioned. So another another thing about Verisite that stands, that makes it stand out is the, dyna the dynamic reporting ability. So our reports are created every time you view it. They're not a static report. So by, um, so, so for instance, let's say our crawler picks up a new uh, URL that happens to match your report, the next time you load it, uh, that URL will then be added to your report and shown within, um, you know, where it matches and everything. Or if another student submits a paper that matches another previous submission, then both reports get updated, you know, so, um, you know, they're not, they're not uh, static. Then on top of that, Instructors have the ability to modify the reports, so they can choose to exclude text. They can choose to exclude source matches. They can um, turn on and off quoted material. Uh, just you know, constantly just adjust it to how they want. If they you know, they can they can stick with the defaults, and then if they want if they feel suspect for a certain part, or they want to make a quick modification to clear up so that the student doesn't feel like they're getting 100% report and they're afraid they're going to get kicked out of school, you know, so they can adjust the report so that they're not, they don't have to worry about getting those kind of feedback. Um, and then we do inline side-by-side uh, -side comparison with the sources and I'll show that as well. Uh, we are integrated in Sakai through the assignments tool. I'll show that later. Um, we're uh, also an LTI service as well, so you get both tools. Um, the LTI service is essentially its own assignments tool that it delivers the reports for you. Uh, so you can create assignments and uh, students can submit to them. Uh, obviously, this is a slide about comparing services. Uh, it's hard to compare one-to-one. -one. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, comparisons and our clients has, have as well and have found that we're fairly uh, you know, um, at, at level with our competition, um, we find that some reports that we we are actually better, and some reports that are better. But you know, that's that's just one of those things. It's a wash. It could just be depend depending on what text you select. Um, for the majority of reports, they're they're pretty much the same. Um, but that's something that you know, obviously, we we want anybody to do uh, testing and verify it for themselves. Uh, the benefits, and I've already mentioned all these things, so let's just jump into the demo. Um, all right. So this is this screen large enough? Can you see that? I zoomed in a little bit. I'm zooming. I don't like zooming in too much, but. Um, all right. So here's the assignments tool with Sakai. You see test two. Um, create the instructions. Um, so Verisite shows up as an uh, an option in the assignments tool. So 
to the Verisite Plagiarism Service. You can select whether to use it and select whether you want the students to view the report or not. Uh, part of the simplicity uh, of Verisite is that we do not want 100 options here. Uh, you know, for the power users, I guess, maybe a small percentage that they, they, they would actually want to be able to control every little uh, aspect of the report. But since our reports are dynamic, you actually already have that control built in um, for those users. So we've watered it down to very simple. We just want to use it or not use it, allow students to view it or not view it. Um, and we're actually adding a third option to be able to set the default of excluding or including um, uh, quoted material, so whether or not you want quotes to be matched. Uh, by default, they are not matched, um, but you can actually choose to set that default per assignment. Okay, uh, so I just created this new one. You'll see the little flag uh, from Sakai saying that this is be checked by Verisite. And I will submit as a student you can do inline text and you can do um, files as well, and as many files as you want. So there's no, uh, there's no restrictions, as many files as you want. And as, you know, as, as I said, sorry, I was selecting that file, I lost my train of thought. All right, so I submitted this one. This is the one I submitted earlier as actually this student here on the other test, so it should match each other. Um, I'm going to click to view submissions. As you can see, the report's already ready. I click it. Uh, Verisite explains how it's going through all the steps. Um, there's an external search engine as well. Right now we're using Bing, so um, to kind of supplement anything that our crawler has missed, uh, we, we use Bing to do a, a back-end search. Um, and obviously Bing is uh, for any open material. So here's a report. As I mentioned, I submitted this as multiple people. Um, so that's why you get a pretty high percentage, 97% match. Uh, we got our, our, um, our, our option or our, um, our legend down here that explains a low match to a high match. Uh, these are, as you can see, even though this is a 100% match, it's a smaller sentence with less uh, unique words. Uh, so that makes it not as high of a match. And so that's why you see longer sentences being read, um, or smaller sentences are a lower match. Uh, so that's, that's based on the scale there to kind of help um, at a glance to see, see what is being matched and what's not being matched and how severe. Uh, so there's two ways to look into a match. You can click the sentence. It'll load um, an inline view of all the other matches. So here I can see that this student, as you can tell, I've submitted this paper several times. Uh, but this is the paper title. I can see the information about that paper because they're within my institution. Um, I can see uh, which site was submitted to, even what assignment, which in this case there was none. Um, I can see the sentence in line next to this sentence and actually jump in and view the report that was submitted that it matches. Um, according to the physics, Andrew Steele, blah, blah, blah. Right, so I can see that matches. But I can also see that these other gray sentences matches, match other sentences in my report. So I can see this happened, this happened. And I can actually click on one of these sentences and it'll pop me down inside my report um, to that sentence I just clicked and highlight it right here. Um, so, as you can tell, there's there's a way to jump kind of back and forth uh, inside your report, one sentence at a time. Um, I can jump out of there, and I don't think, okay, this doesn't have any internet matches. All right, so this one has multiple matches. So the highest match happens to be a student match. So you see the student submission aggregation. You can go next to the internet um, and it'll actually download this URL for you uh, and then parse it and then highlight it and then also show you also other matches. You can click to view the source um, if you want. It'll load it in your browser uh, eventually. There it goes. Um, 
So that's the sentence by sentence match uh, view. We have a uh, top matches option as well. So you can see the top matches by paper. So you can tell these are the first top matches happen to be student matches, which are the identical ones. This is that URL that I just clicked. Um, as I mentioned, these reports are dynamic, so you can choose to ignore. Um, it'll reload the report for you. Uh, since there's two other exact matches, the score won't go down. Um, these two are 100% as well. Um, you can also check the details on the top matches the same way as before. You can see this is this, this is actually my course. This is my t assignment title that I was submitted to. Um, maybe if I want to re-include it, I can put that uh, put that paper back into the report. Um, and it'll reload the report again. Uh, what else? And oh yeah, so if you actually click the paper, it'll do a paper comparison side by side. So the same one, it loads that submission for you automatically. It breaks it down per sentence. Uh, and you can click and jump through each sentence of this paper that matches inside your report. And you can see um, how this, this is, like in this case, in this period since the submission was agreed, the report in this uh, period since the mission was agreed. And then you can jot of it, and it goes back to the normal report. Um, obviously, you can download the original attachments. You can print the report if you need to print it. Uh, what else? Details. Since this is not LTI, you can't really get much more out of this, but I'll show you the LTI version. Um, as, as we say, we try to make Verisite uh, straightforward. One way of doing that is we're not trying to implement LMS um, so we do leave a lot of we, we leave the grading the commenting um, the roster and that kind of stuff information we leave that to uh, Sakai uh, during the Sakai integration and so um, you know grading features and stuff are disabled in a Sakai report uh, because we don't want instruct or students and instructors both to know don't know where they should add comments or where they should see their grades. Um, they want We want it to be uh, uniform across their entire experience within Sakai. So um, that's why we rely on Sakai for that kind of information. And that's where it should be. Uh, for the LTI tool, um, it's not going to assume that it's in a Sakai integration. So you do have the ability to comment and grade, um, and add rosters and stuff like that. And then. Oh yeah, so another option is you can exclude text. So if I hide this text and I choose to exclude it and I do an inline comment, uh, this isn't important. Save it. It shows that the modifications have been made, that I need to reload it. It highlights it showing that it's been excluded. You can actually hover over it to see the comment. And when I refresh this, this text that I just chose to exclude will be excluded in the report. And so now you can see it's not highlighted anymore. The report went down to 69%. Blah, blah, blah. No? Uh, okay. That explains. I can, yeah, I can hear you a little bit. Okay. Uh, I wanted to point out <laughs> to your attention that there's been some chat um, questions coming in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not reading that. Uh, <laughs> I'll let you know. So. I, I can go over questions at the end. I'm almost done. Okay. okay cool. Um. Let's see. And then the final the final thing I was just going to show you real quick was the uh, LTI integration. As I said, this is uh, this is this is Sakai. I added an LTI tool, uh, Verisite. Um, and this is I just I like loading it in a different page and tab. Uh, so this is LTI. Obviously, if you have Sakai, you don't need this. Uh, we are using the Sakai integration over this uh, just because it uses Sakai's gradebook and assignments tool, which students are familiar with. Um, but you know, you still have this in your back pocket if you want to use it for a specific class or instructor or something. Um, and it's it's the exact same thing. Uh, the, the LTI is bootstrap, so it's responsive and meant to be viewed on um, any kind of device. So uh, as you see, I made that really small and you can still see uh, everything you need to read. You can um, 
you can see that these are actually tied together behind the scenes. So I submitted these two papers through Sakai, uh, but since LTI knows the context, it knows that these two papers have been submitted to this site, so it loads them automatically. Um, obviously, it doesn't work the other way around. Sakai doesn't know when um, you create assignments and create um, or submit papers in Verisite. It's not going to be synced to Sakai, but the other way from Sakai uh, various will be synced just because of the nature of how it's set up. Um, you can create assignments, you can submit papers uh, just like you would in an assignments tool. Um, so really, as I said, it's just wrapper. Whenever you click it, it generates a report just like, um, just like Sakai does when you click the link to view it. And then it's the exact same report, it's just inside the wrapper for the LTI. Um, and as I mentioned, you have the ability to grade comment in the LTI that you wouldn't have in Sakai because that should not be there. Um, and there. There's a score log to keep track of everything that's been modified since our reports are dynamic. Uh, but that's, that's a quick overview, and I'll jump into the questions. Uh, let's see. Does this work only with file submissions, or does it work with inline? Yeah, so inline submissions. Uh, that's not a Verisite modification. That's just um, some work that uh, Western and I both worked on uh, to allow Sakai to do multiple files and inline submissions for plagiarism detection services. So um, for Sakai, yes, you can do inline and multiple files. Um, let's see. And that that's actually going to be default for Sakai 11. Um, so, yeah, we, we put it in for all our clients that want it, uh, which is everybody <laughs> that, that's using Verisite. So it's, it's compatible in Sakai. Um, all right. Let's see. Why won't that go away? All right. Well, that's stuck. All right. So what other questions? I'm sorry. <laughs> grading. Grading should be done in Sakai. Uh, points can also be scanned. Yes. Yep. Anything with text. Um, we've done PowerPoints. I've only found one that didn't work, and it was like 2002 WordPress or something. Um, but all our testing, um, any file, any file type, PDF, as long as it's not an image PDF, um, any Word document, obviously. Uh, PowerPoints and RTFs and text, etc. Uh, pages, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have pages, I guess. Maybe I do since I have a Mac, but I don't use pages. Um, we do not have Verisite and Forms. That's just because Sakai doesn't have it. Uh, that's those things, you know, it's just a limitation of Sakai. Actually, in Moodle, we have it in Forms, so. Um, it's just, it's, you know, it would require a lot of work to set it up. Um, what else? I can't scroll on this thing, so, oh yeah, I can. Any other questions? All right, so, um... Are there any law journals included in your database? Uh, right now, all our journals are public information. We're working, we, we actually have a very promising lead uh, that we're working on um, getting a private, private journal uh, scanned into Verisite. But we did do really ex extensive testing with uh, our competitor who allows people to assume that they have a lot of private information um, which is a bad assumption because during all our tests, their their results were pretty similar to Verisite. They may have had a, one or two private uh, data that was, you know, we weren't allowed able to access. But um, for the most part, uh, a lot of journals don't even have uh, legal permission to allow third parties to scan their data. Um, and that's based on the fact that they're not the um, 
the author or the publisher. Uh, so we have found that that to be a, a bad assumption that there's a lot of private journals being scanned um, in the in this market. Uh, but we're working on it, and for right now, it's only public information that we can access. Um, let's see. I'll show some quick links real quick. Wrap up, uh, Brian. We usually take uh, the last few minutes for um, either to do administration. Okay. But um, I see there is so, a question from Wilma. Can you go over file types again, i.e., Mac pages? Because somebody was wondering, they can you update Yeah, I don't Mac? know for sure about Mac pages. Um, I don't remember testing it, so I wouldn't be surprised if it if it works. I, I wouldn't. I'd be surprised that it doesn't work. I guess because uh, as, as I said, our our uh, thing that we use uh, to parse uh, text is meant to work for any file type. Um, but I would, I would have to specifically check Mac pages. Uh, just check out verisite.com. Um, we offer free three-month trials if you want. Uh, no obligation, site-wide, no restrictions. Um, we also do, uh, there's a private, like one, or you can have a personal sign-up or if you just search for Verisite sign up in Google, uh, you can actually sign up for a Try Verisite account. Um, and then uh, updates and status as for our users. So uh, if you are using Verisite, we, we keep a list of all our updates and the status of uh, Verisite's response time and uptime. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, you can email me as well or uh, support at Verisite. Dot com. And thanks for your time, everyone. That's it was really great to, to be able to, to demo this for everyone. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Okay, so now we will go to the final part of our agenda here for the Area Teaching and Learning meeting, um, which, let's see, did I miss anything? We got that, we got that. Uh, so discussing uh, future meetings and meeting themes topics, um, we have on the agenda for next week, we've got uh, H&H Portfolio, um, Brenda Maps, Wake Forest, formerly school chapters. Uh, we have on November 4th is this high virtual conference, which is an all-day event. If you haven't registered, you might want to check that out. Uh, and November 11th, we have now comment demo, demo by Matt Burgess from EVA. Uh, and then uh, we have a long line of things we have on the list here. Uh, I don't have any updates myself from things I've checked in. Um, I will double check on some of these things. I have checked with a few developers, haven't had um, any response there. Uh, and uh, let's see. So I guess if you want to come up with some additional, I see a visual ideas put down here, OE used in teaching and learning, uh, which would be great. I'm hearing some uh, typing. Oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> And let me think. Um, or if you volunteer, remember, and we also talked about having, uh, you know, if you want to talk about a teaching and learning thing, it doesn't have to be about a tool. So if you have an idea about a teaching and learning thing, feel free to put it down on the additional items. Or if you want to volunteer to lead a discussion, it can be more of a roundtable. It doesn't have to be a presentation. It can be more like a birds of a feather or just kind of everyone sharing their ideas about particular um, teaching challenges um, with technology. So uh, uh, I saw that I was being lost to keyboarding now. Uh, how's my audio now? Is it OK? Cool. So I think what we might do, um, you know, if I don't get any, if we don't get any ideas this time, maybe we can put it as an agenda item, but a little, give it a little more time, maybe even do a round, round kind of on this group. And, uh, uh, how long will it take to get the video from this call into YouTube, uh, Stephen? Well, it's really mostly me. I'm the main bottleneck. It takes a few hours uh, at least for um, for blind, the, the Blindside Network Systems to um, process the video. And I have to download the video and upload it into 
YouTube. So uh, but I usually get it done within a few days. So it probably should be done, you know, by early next week or earlier. But you can ping me if, uh, if you need it earlier than that. Um, so there is a lot of manual processing there. Um, anyway, so I guess a final call for any um, uh, ideas. Anyone um, want to uh, for, for presentations, put them on the Etherpad, or if you want to sign up and do a presentation again, you know, I think it'd be really cool to just think, you know, independent of tools, what are some issues that, that you face and from an instructional technology perspective is certainly welcomed as well. And, um, and like I said, one idea just popping in my mind now is for, for the next session or the next one or two sessions, we can give a little more time maybe to this and, and even do like a round robin and call on people individually um, to give you a voice in, uh, in talking about the kinds of things that, that you, know, you might be willing to, that you'd be interested in hearing or that you might be willing to lead. Um, or a bird's with feathers that you might be on over. So, um, we're going to do seconds now. If anyone has any suggestions or types anything on the Etherpad, I see Kelter and Media Gallery tool as a request for a demo. Okay, uh, let's see. So, I would say. Uh, think about that for next time. I appreciate the additional suggestions on the Etherpad. Um, feel free to add a few more and think about it again for the next meeting or two. Maybe we'll give a few more times. Uh, does anyone have Kaltura Media, Gal Media Gallery tool that could do a demo? Or does anyone use OAE specifically in teaching and learning? I, I assume Maris uh, does some of that. Okay, so Matt, think about whether uh, Virginia would be willing to do a demo on Kaltura. I know you were already booked for the 11th to do a demo on, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, now comment, but, oh, and Notre Dame has it as well, so maybe the two, maybe Notre Dame and, and Virginia could do a dual kind of uh, thing. Cool, very cool. Let's look into signing you guys up at Kaltura. Notre Dame in Virginia. Let's see if we can get to make Notre Dame also. That would be nice. All right. And I see, uh, let's see, we're looking to upgrade our service to include the media gallery. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. All right, well, keep the ideas coming. Feel free to contact me, chat Gordon, um, with additional ideas, and uh, we will uh, uh, talk to you next time. So thank you, everyone, for, for attending. Uh, Brian asked, going to educate? I know I'm not going uh, this year, Brian, so I'm sorry not to see you there. Let me turn off the recording here.